Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and today I would like to talk about the meta in the upcoming Forsaken DLC. This is a discussion video, and I would really like to hear your thoughts about it. Now, the meta is in a lot of games. Players use the meta, and through the years of playing and covering Destiny, I've seen and heard a lot of opinions for Destiny. Some players only use the meta, some players think that the meta lacks skill, others don't find the meta that fun. And a lot of people know, but a lot of people don't know what meta stands for. It's a term that it's loosely thrown around throughout the years in every game. And once we go over it, it's going to start making some more sense. So the meta, most effective tactic available, most effective tools available. And that's why the meta shifts. So in Destiny's case, we had the Mita meta, the AR meta. Now we're in this exotic pulse meta. And when Bungie does change things around, in a way, it makes the game feel a little bit more fresh. Recently, Cami Cakes and I were on the Massive Breakdown podcast talking about some of this, and when it goes live, I'll put the link down in the description, but I want to talk about it just a little bit more. First off, I'm a player that uses a variety of weapons. Now, I'm not the best player, but I'm an above average player, and here's how I look at it. If I know that I'm not using the meta, then I'm putting myself at a disadvantage, and when I get killed by meta weapons, I can't get mad at the user for trying to do well for using the most effective weapons. Because I can use them too, I'm just choosing not to. There's going to be a time and place for it. When push comes to shove, if the Redrick's Claymore is on the line, I'm going to be using the meta, no questions asked. And sure, in quick play, public games, you might be annoyed at the Graviton Lance everywhere, the Vigilance Wing everywhere, a hunter shade-stepping with a worm husk. But in my opinion, you can't fault someone for trying to do well. It's up to Bungie to look at some of the data and then come up with solutions. But start thinking about what you believe the current meta is, the most effective tools available, the most effective tactic available. And I'm sure the Graviton Lance and Vigilance Wing come to mind. Maybe Crimson. Crimson's more so that it can compete. But with these weapons and meta, what it boils down to are a couple things. Ease of use, where they're slotted, their time to kill, and the ability to use them on any map. And Destiny 2 is a different kind of beast. Due to this two primary system that we currently have that's going to be changing, for one person it could be a, a Graviton Lance and Tiope, Antio. For the other it could be a Graviton Lance Better Devils, and another a Graviton Lance Kinetic Sidearm. You could say that there's a second metagame within CQC, right? A certain SMG? Sidearm? But honestly, they all perform fairly well. You can do well with a variety of those in CQC. But in this current meta, I do feel a lot more comfortable using a variety loadout than I did in the previous months. And that's a testament to how Bungie is working through all of this. Because in the first couple of months of Destiny, I felt at a massive disadvantage if I wasn't running Mine of Last Hope, Uriel's Antiope. Because those had those four big things, right? Slot location, ease of use, time to kill, they're good on any map. Because back then, the 600 RPM ARs, they couldn't compete. 180 and 200 RPM scouts could duel decently against Mida, but Mida was the clear above and beyond winner. So we've moved through these months from where we started and where we are right now. That's a huge shift in weapon viability. I can go in with the Polaris Lance on Bannerfall and do really well. Same with the Tome Patrol. I could use a Huckleberry and a Requiem and do about just as good as I would with a stronger loadout. That's a hard thing to do because if everything is overpowered, then nothing is overpowered. If everything is balanced, then everything is bland, if that makes sense. There's always going to be top weapons, honestly. There needs to be. But it's the second tier options, it's how they're handled is what's really important. Like your Requiems, your Crimsons, your Polaris Lances, things like that. But with Forsaken, the main topic of the video and the meta and what it could be, and let's talk about it, we have these weapon slot changes. We have weapon randomization, mod reworks. There's a really a lot to consider. The entire makeup of the game is about to change when this DLC comes. Now we're going to have the ability to carry shotguns, snipers, other weapons with us. Also, there's things like the triple shotgun loadout, but there's no real need to worry about that because when you break it down, the heavy shotgun is going to need ammo. The special shotgun is going to have limited ammo and you have to find you know, find it. And then we're just going to have the kinetic shotgun that you have always. Nothing really to worry about, probably. But that leads us to the possible meta with this upcoming DLC. There are a lot of weapons that are in a really good spot currently. And sure, let's, let's take the, the heavy weapon options. There are some really strong ones, but if you aren't good with a shotgun, there's something else for you. A fusion rifle, as an example, lots of options, it's not just you need to use a matador or you fail. And with Forsaken, what are those possibilities? Is it going to be a hand cannon sniper meta? Maybe a graviton lance shotgun meta? It depends on so much. It depends on where these weapons are slotted. It depends on how much access we have to this special ammo to go into those snipers and those shotguns. It depends on the archetypes allowed. Like as an example, the full auto shotguns, I feel should stay in that heavy category because they're a special type of good. Same thing with the 90 RPM grenade launchers. 
Those outliers should stay in the heavy category, and for others, just use the different archetypes to make up Kinetic and Special. But who knows, maybe you can just slot anything anywhere you want. It also depends on what perks can be rolled on the weapons, right? What mods can be attached? Maybe a Outlaw Kill Clip or Outlaw Reactive Reload like in Destiny 1 Hand Cannon really stands out. There's so much to consider. And honestly, that's where I'm kind of going. Sooner or later, the meta will rise, but just like now, I think there's going to be multiple options to combat it. Because while you're listening, start and really think about how well SMGs and sidearms do in CQC. Because say someone is running that hand cannon sniper loadout when Forsaken drops, if you get in range on that guy, he can't do anything about your SMG. So in that instance, with these new loadouts like the sniper hand cannon, the current meta would do just fine. You could just continually use your Graviton Lance SMG combo. Or maybe it, you could use like the crossbow hand cannon. Same thing, you can get close, so you can combat that. Because we're going to have these new weapons, new loadouts, new supers, class nodes. We have an entirely different game here. With what we've had in Year 1 Destiny 2, we're essentially adding in the Forsaken DLC the ability of one-hit kill potential in routine engagements on your everyday Crucible map with those shotguns and snipers. That changes the game greatly. I know that they're also looking at a time to kill, and I think a lot of players will be on board with this statement right here. Heavy ammo really runs everything, because with the current time to kill, if someone's running me down with a shotgun, most of my weapons can't stop him before he gets to me. If someone has a fusion at mid-range, he can get a shot off and still charge it to get another shot off and he'll eventually kill me. And in contrast, in Destiny 1, when someone ran straight at me with a shotgun, they were absolutely punished. No way they were making it to me with that hand cannon time to kill, because you let them know at that point you're not going to be able to do that to me, and you're going to have to start using your movement a little bit better. But even now in Destiny 2, like even when I'm backpedaling, I don't, if I don't have power ammo, I can't directly counter them. It's just very tough. So hopefully Bungie looks into that. I know that if they get that time to kill faster, most weapons become more appealing. Like the Jade Rabbit with the Catalyst, if that becomes a three-shot kill, it is instantly in the conversation again. Also, would you be fine with a faster time to kill with all these changes? More so for primary play, like our hand cannon scouts pulses. Because I believe that the Vigilance Wing and the Graviton Lance are in a really good spot right now, the three shot Lance, and if you're very precise with the wing, you get a, a two tap off. I think that's great, so that 0 .87, 0 .9, one second kill time is good for the game in my opinion. So if those changes do happen, think about some of the weapons that are in a horrible spot. There are some weapons that have over a two second body kill time, that's really rough. So TTK changes is also going to affect the meta. Some weapons are going to shine, and other weapons are going to have a really hard time unless they're tweaked. It's all very delicate. It all really is. There's also a whole bunch of brand new gear that we haven't seen yet. There could be new perks for armor that make weapons great, new perks on weapons that could make them elite. Maybe some perks could be added to our existing weapons to really elevate them. So I'm keeping a very open mind coming into Forsaken, this DLC, and it's something to really start thinking about, because I'm judging all of my opinions on what we already know currently and what I think it could be. In a lot of ways, the floodgates are about to open with this stuff, and there's going to be a lot of variables. But since there are, in conclusion, I do feel that there's going to be multiple loadouts that are going to be viable. Just from what I've seen with this recent update, there's also a good chance that it could be complete chaos. And I'm telling you right now, on my end, I would be okay with that. Because Destiny is its own game, and I feel that they're taking the necessary steps to get Destiny feeling like Destiny again. And I'm not just talking about or trying to relay to try to get it back to Destiny 1. I wanted an improved version of Destiny 1, and I think that's where they're heading. I'm excited. I'm very excited to cover it, dig into it, and talk about it. Some of the new gear, TTK, ranges, the new weapon perks, how they work. And in the upcoming months and past launch, there's a lot of potential with this DLC. It's just that currently we have no idea how it's going to pan out. And hopefully soon they start talking about the specifics of mods, the, the random rolls, the slots that they're going to put weapons in. Each and every single one of those can have a huge impact. So now it's your time. Let's talk about it in the comment section. Everything's on the table. You can comment on TTK, weapon slots, what you think the meta is going to look like. How do you feel about those things? Things like the Graviton Lance shotgun, sniper hand cannon. Why will they work and why won't they work? What do you think is going to be the most powerful thing coming up in the update? And if there are enough different types of ways to get around it with what we have. Also things like maybe the PC meta is going to be more sniper focused because they have more precision over there and the console is going to be more shotgun. Lots of different ways it can play out. So again, thank you guys for spending a little bit of your day with me. Let's talk about it in the comment section. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy. They thought they had you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> they thought they had. Zone A captured. Zone advantage is yours. Zone C lost. Vicious. <laughs>